you guys again for taking the time. I know that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a crazy year. I figured we kind of make it interesting. We'll go 70s, 80s to 90s to modern Marvel Legends. How's that sound? With stuff that you guys have already revealed. Nothing like, you know, where's this figure and, you know, all that usual stuff. So let's talk about the 3.75 inch retro stuff. I myself collecting, you know, toy biz back in the day, Secret Wars here and there. But what's the, what's the idea behind it? What made you go all of a sudden, you know, retro stuff is big, but what made you go, let's apply this to the Marvel formula. So yeah, that, glad you love that, uh, Toy Shiz. You know, I uh, thought this was up your alley. It's something that um, maybe fans weren't anticipating, right, necessarily. But, you know, we've just been kind of looking at the trends and, and the retro toy trends. We kind of do these more modernized take on retro, which is like those six inch figures, Legends figures on a blister card that look like the older toys. But, um, you know, we wanted to try something different that, that was more of a nostalgic pull. And um, instead of just kind of reissuing uh, original figures like some of the other brands from Ghostbusters and Transformers with the G1 type stuff, you know, Marvel's toy history was a little, didn't kind of, in my opinion, didn't really ramp up fully until the, the early 90s, really. Um, there was Secret Wars, you know, there was some Mego type stuff, but those were kind of short-lived lines and those were great for what they were. We didn't want to kind of tread on those directly by coming out with the Hasbroized versions of that. So we kind of thought, what else? What is something else we could do? And just kind of looking at some of the other competitive offerings out there and just the trends of, you know, seeing this three and three quarter, uh, six by nine blister card, uh, figure five point ish articulation figure with really awesome packaging and, and a cool figure. You know, we thought Marvel was, was due for that because A, it never existed back really. Nego did some three and three quarter um, in a very small run. They did like like less than less than a dozen characters maybe half a dozen yeah like the pocket um, ones yeah yeah i want to get the history right because i want to you know give everyone kind of credit but kind of um yeah let's like what can we do in legends that is a collector appeal that might have some casual fan appeal these things are basically like 10 bucks 10 bucks each so it's really easy to kind of come in and grab grab all of them or just grab a couple and and by starting a new line right we can we can hit the the bigger characters all from the start so you've got your cap iron man um, Spider-Man and then some other figures that are coming that we haven't revealed yet. So that kind of, that's what all led us to starting this new line. We have big plans for it in 2021, as we've, as we've mentioned, and I have some of them behind me here. They are available now for Pulse in these special first editions. So not to say that, you know, we won't do Iron Man uh, in the main line. Of course we will, but these Pulse versions will remain special. And then I actually had it right here on, on my desk, but these foil versions too Ooh, Ooh, yeah. were, were revealed at PulseCon front and back <laughs> foil again with that sticker with different deco that Tony put on it um, so yeah we're really psyched for this I know um, launching it on Pulse this year is kind of like a contained release of it but I um, wanted to, to, to do something special for Pulse and, and it, you'll see it kind of everywhere um, next year. The idea behind them I, I like that it's it's not like you said infringing on like um, old stuff it's it's what's come before made new again and that's what i think appeals to me it's something different i don't feel like i'm buying something again right um as far as later down the road are you thinking about mainly keeping classic or potentially like mcu type 3.75 type characters maybe something along those lines later down the road i think we'll see we'll see how it goes um we yeah. just get to launch you know with uh this specific style comic based kind of around those 70s and 80s um yeah you know, we didn't want to put in characters like deadpool for instance right who weren't around at that time yet mm -hmm. uh, that was we wanted to kind of start with the big ones and then we're working with you know um john tyler christopher on the art uh so he is doing the art for the entire line thus far to really keep everything in that same style and it allows us to to do figures um like this iron man this is a very specific kind of armored look from from that era yeah um, so, that's yeah. what I like. That's what I like about it. It just keeps that retro for me personally. I'd like to see, you know, keep with that seventies, eighties, but I know that, you know, there's a lot of MCU fans and things like that. So, but I think what you got going, what you got started is actually pretty cool. So I'm excited to see play sets and, uh, and, and vehicles too. <laughs> yeah. We can't wait. There's, there's, there's a whole new universe. So moving like, let's say from seventies, eighties now into nineties, let's talk about like maximum carnage specifically like that comic book. I thought it'd be kind of fun with kind of leading up to certain Marvel Legends, especially now, Venom 2 has been pushed, 
Carnage obviously hinted at it. You guys have been doing a lot of 90s comic book Venom stuff, too. You got Morbius. He's in there from the 90s, uh, the new wave. You got, uh, was it the symbiotes? It, was Maximum Carnage a big emphasis on, like, your understanding of Marvel, like, when you got into comics and everything else? Because there's only a few characters left to kind of complete the whole Maximum Carnage uh, storyline, basically. So... Yeah, it was a massive, what was it, like 16 issues? Four, yeah, 14. Well, 14, 14, yeah, yeah. 14, but there okay, was, yeah. there was three before, like, with Carnage was actually introduced, and then, then they went okay. to, uh, you know, Maximum Carnage, but... Yeah, we still need Carrion, we need Shriek. Um, so, you know, there's definitely, th those are the, the, the two that jumped to the, my top of mind. We just did, what, uh, the uh, Demo Goblin, Demo. right? So yeah. Uh, and Doppelganger was done a year or two ago. So, yeah, those are some of the more recent ones. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I think all of those characters are ones we have to figure out how to find homes for. Um, it was an awesome book. I, I do remember reading those uh, in the, uh, you know, actual, you know, in the individual books back in the day. So I think I still yeah. have all of those somewhere in my basement in a, in a long box. So. Um, yeah, I, I, I let me know who else I'm missing. I know those are the two. Those are the two big ones in my brain. But it's those two, and then Nightwatch, who was like that weird Spawn guy that was like a villain at the end or whatever he was. You guys are doing Firestar, but then people are gonna go, oh, "It's not '90s Firestar." So I think those are the only four. Because that Morbius looks killer. When you guys put that out there, I was like, "Oof, they're going Maximum Carnage." I see it. <laughs> see, I'm making notes right now. There you go. See, they are list. They listen. They listen. To, you kind of have to trick them a little bit with the questions. That's why. They, <laughs> as far as like the the marketing campaign, if you guys remember, they had SNES red cartridges. You guys play the video game. Uh, the story was not exactly like even you think like okay, Carnage isn't that easy to take out, especially with all these like uh, you know cosmic beings and stuff like that. But there was just something about it that was everlasting, and I don't. It's hard to explain, but at the same time, it's just a weird, crazy storyline that was just fun. And the characters in the Marvel Legends figures just bring all that 90s nostalgia back. So it's whatever you guys are doing, keep that up, most definitely. <laughs> Let's go to, like, 90s animated. So that, you guys revealed the Black Cat away. Um, it's awesome to see her because that's, like, for me, being obsessed with Spider-Man animated series, that's, like, the true the cartoon version of the Black Cat. And I think that that I heard a lot of, you know, fans going, okay, more, more, as best as I guess you can character uh, models, you know, in that sense. But are there plans now to continue that? Now you've seen the kind of the fan reception for Spider-Man. Dan, Dan, this is all you. <laughs> I feel like if I talk about it, it's not going to like be objective because uh, I mean, I think all the fans know I love the animated series like Spider-Man and X-Men and the Iron Man and so I'm a big fan. I'm very happy that we got that black cat in like that animated series look. Um, yeah. And I think the fan reception to just the uh, retro carded Spider-Mans this year has been amazing. And the more like, the more we see um, what you guys want, you know, that, that's what we try to lean to. We try to give the fans what they want all the time. And if there is that big demand for Spider-Man, like animated uh, series type of looks. Um, we are paying attention. We, we have seen those comments a lot. Um, and you can bet that I bug Dwight every day to try to get some <laughs> series based. So, so don't worry, he probably hates it because every time we have one of those meetings or we're talking about selection, like I always plug that in somewhere. So um, yeah, he knows. And um, that's why he's keeping <laughs> quiet right now. But it, But the thing is like, and why I could talk about this more is that all of our figures, they're inspired by things, right? So they're not going to exactly be um, direct replications of like, even from the books or anything like that. It's something that has inspired Dwight and the team. And that's what we try to replicate. You know what I mean? And Dwight, you could take it from there. But yeah, we, we do know fan demand for the animated series is, is pretty high right now. So and mm -hmm. keep it up, guys. That's all. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely like to. Add, I mean, we like to add as many from the actual show and there's possible, but that wasn't the original intent. The intent was just to kind of celebrate 
all things awesome on Spider-Man on that great uh, kind of classic card. So I think in the future you'll see the characters mixed in that may not have existed from that show or in that, you know, line look. But, um, you know, what we try to stay as pure as possible, but there's some takes of characters that are just too good to not put onto the, some of those cards because, you know, our love for all of these characters has stretched way beyond the source material that formulated whatever we wherever we first jump our jumping off point to get into this stuff you know you know maximum carnage was great but it lasted you know just those issues and then so much more of those characters came out later in new new variations and new villains and new heroes to fight them so you know whenever we can find the opportunity to mix in all of that stuff to kind of uh keep it going when we have something that is resonating with the fans um and still be as respectful to the original source material as possible. We, we try to. Yeah, I th- and I think that works because, like, in the long line of, let's say, Marvel toy, you know, from starting in even Toy Biz days, you had Spider-Man, the animated series figures, but not all the time were they releasing characters that necessarily showed up on the show. Sometimes, sometimes they were very spot on to the cartoon. Other times it's more kind of incorporating more for the comic book. You just kind of were happy to get an Electro, you know, back then, even though it was based primarily on the comic, whereas you know, he shows up differently in the, in the actual cartoon show, but yeah, in all honesty, I mean, if that's what it takes, just keep doing what you're doing. Cause reception, especially on my end, uh, people want more. So <laughs> what do you want to see from the anime series? Well, you know, it, you got to do Venom. That's, that's like the big one. Um, you, you know, Blade, he was awesome. Aw- I, I want an Alistair Smythe. I don't know why. You know what I mean? He's because good. I think we never we never got like your like an actual one. So maybe you know even human form that would be cool. And then make the car to just make them all. You know the, <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to do. I'm sure, right? No, but I think Venom Venom would be uh, the the top one. I think that would be cool. What so. were those gross uh, shoulder things of his? So this is funny. When I when I was a kid uh, and not really knowing who Smythe was when I when the cartoon I was like okay. And for Christmas one year, I got some kind of Costco comic book pack. And it was Invasion of the Spider Slayers, but like the more recent one. So basically, in the long shot, is that Smythe becomes the ultimate Spider Slayer. I guess that's what he kind of goes as. So those, even though in the cartoon, he had like those things that popped out of his shoulders and they, for some reason, shot lasers. That was Yeah, that's what I was about to say. That was never a thing, which... Having then, when he finally showed up on the show, I was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> but that's the beauty of the animated show. They just did whatever they wanted to do. So going on to, what is it about the 90s animated shows from Spider-Man, Hulk, Iron Man? What is it that made them so lasting to fans that we even look at X-Men and go, that's, that's what I think about is, you know, storytelling, quality of animation. I think it's for, for me and probably Dan a little bit, um, it's kind of how you got your start a lot of for a lot of folks um, in this, you know, age de- broad age demographic. It either yeah. got your start or it was something cool that was very, uh, very well done. You know, just with there's there's been books written about it and how the storylines were not dumbed down for kids and they were they were kind of faithfully for the X Men specifically translating you know these big arcs like you know the Dark Phoenix saga and, and putting it on. So yeah, I think you just kind of. It's just the power of, of nostalgia too, of kind of what you, you know, these kids nowadays don't know what it was like to program a VCR for <laughs> and learn how to do that and then, you know, watch it back. So yeah, um, I know Dwight, Dwight came across a, the show probably in a little bit of a different capacity, but I think you, you enjoyed them too, if I remember right, Dwight. Yeah, yeah, I went back and kind of just like watched bits and pieces out of them because I'm older than you guys and I didn't actually watch them in their first run when they came out. So um, for me, it's fun to go back now and just kind of remember my little brother, he watched them some and I would just kind of, you know, I'd sit there and, you know, hang out with him and, you know, uh, as he was enjoying them and I kind of absorbed them through that. But uh, I didn't, you know, I wasn't, I was what in the, in the nineties, I was, you know, finishing up high school going off into college. So, you know, for me, I wasn't in that phase. So uh, that's another great thing about our team being as diverse as it is, you know, where there's gaps in my knowledge, because I was reading books at that time. We now have, you know, 
Dan and, and, you know, and Ryan and them on the team who actually were into that stuff so hardcore the first time out, we all together, that's what makes us a nice, well-balanced team because not any one of us has all of the answers, but together, I feel like we hit on most of the, the correct themes and beats for the, you know, the product offerings for the year. Yeah. yeah. I think so. The animated stuff. And now we got what fantastic four with doom with whatever you guys are cooking up with that. I would say, I think fans are going to be stoked. So mm. <laughs> <laughs> if only we knew the characters in there, you know? Um, so <laughs> this was cool. I, uh, I went on my Instagram, you know, I'm going to be talking with the Marvel legends team. Do you have any que like lingering questions for what was already revealed? And most of them are kind of like yes and no, maybe answers from you guys, just so everybody knows, and you guys can officially say, uh, people have been finding the little stickers at Walgreens for uh, the Eternals, which I happen to have. Those are officially pushed back, correct? Those will not be making them on the, on the store shelves <laughs> by the end That's of this year. correct. Walgreens will not be getting a 12 month early out. Maybe yeah. they, they wanted it, I don't know, no, but uh, yeah, with the, with the announcement recently of the movie moving back to October, I believe, of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, that was just kind of a, a bit of a mix up, so. Uh, okay. Don't, don't, don't be fooled by those empty pegs. Yeah, right? Just te like early tees. I had to have that sticker. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, if I can't have the figures, <laughs> the Walgreens won't mind if I uh, take the sticker. That's how crazy it gets. Um, let's say, uh, the question was uh, the Spider-Verse figures you guys revealed. You had uh, Miles and uh, Gwen. Will they, and for whatever, if there are more figures later on, Will they be in scale with one another, how they kind of measure up within the movie itself? I would like to, uh, yeah, we've got, um, we debuted Miles and, um, well here, Miles next to, as far as scaling. There you go, see? You know, uh, he's, he's nice and short, you know, compared to, uh, you know, what he should be. And Gwen is uh, comparable in height to him as well. Um, Excellent. And I would love to do more of those characters. I absolutely love that movie. And I would love to get uh, Peter B or uh, Penny and her spider unit. Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, and, and there was tons of villains. I don't know if I want to revisit Kingpin this soon because we've just done a couple of them, but a black suited version of Kingpin would be cool too. Unfortunately though, he's so, if we did him in scale, we couldn't even use the kingpin we have because he was so, you know, ginormous and, and yeah, he had a neck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we, you know, well, you, maybe you could like re-sculpt it, just put the head lower, you know, right the chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same, same with talking about Miles. Um, will there be alternate heads for him? Uh, whereas what was just shown, will there be a mask or a hooded, anything like that? There are extra parts that weren't yet shown for many okay. characters. Okay, cool. Um, for Firestar, this was a very pertinent question. Will Ms. Lion come with the Firestar figure? And that's her little dog that was from Spider-Man and his amazing friends. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep in mind, like, we normally try to save all the accessories for later down the line. So mm -hmm. we guys teases of you know the characters like whether it be miles or firestar but there are other accessories that we showed of you know characters that are going to be coming out later down that we'll reveal excellent we wanted to um, see the okay. black cat went over with the black cat uh <laughs> yesterday you know for for me i think that works because uh well you know i think i responded to your thing on twitter um that's a good mcguire type cat for the for the jack o or Mad Jack figure. So when I saw yeah, that, I, I was, saw like, that. That, oh. was good. that was good. Yeah, I was like, oh, that works. That's cool. Can you, can you go over it all about the retro event that Target will be having for the fall for um, Gambit and Rogue? Is that something you talk about? So I don't know that we can... Yeah, so it's a program, I believe, in December, Target. Uh, it'll be several items. We have revealed some of them, so there, there will okay. be more. Uh, the more coming, so to help build up hype for that event. And I think just a logistical thing for that, because it is going to be a big in-store play. Um, that's why we didn't launch the pre-order during PulseCon for Rogue, Rogue and Gambit here. So um, no need to, to worry about dealing with pre-orders. And I, I, would, I would like to say that with the Storm and Thunderbird two-pack 
like this past weekend, you know, I, I, and you were posting a lot of photos too of people walking the aisles and seeing them, people kind yeah. of forming lines. Dan, Dan was out shopping too and getting it. So <laughs> for anyone kind of worried, I, I would just want to want them to stay positive. And uh, they are making a big deal out of it because it is kind of an in-store pull. Um, gotcha. People into Target there. Uh, you know, in, in talking about that, and I know, you know, time is of the essence here, uh, just real quick, I think that while it hasn't been, you know, as far as fans saying, okay, I can't get the stuff, you know, Red Hulk sells out and, and other figures, this was kind of a good showing in the sense of people really just walked into stores and for the most part, the figures were there. So I think that it just, it took a little bit to get there, but I think that they, it went off pretty well. Most stores didn't put anything out too early. I kind of lucked out some you know by me they had done that but um no i think it was good just in terms of okay i want to go to the store they go to the store and things were there so yeah and we, we really and we hear the fans when it comes to all the issues and none of us on the team want to ever make a fan feel like sad or mad or anything like that right we watch you i guys. sometimes like making the fan sad <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Just wanna, but, uh, hey, the record. Hey, full that disclosure here. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. You know. I'm just. Saying, I, I'm. I'm. I'm aware. Yeah. So we are. Uh, just. Just know that we are aware, and uh, we're trying to do what's best to the fans as much as possible. You know what I mean? Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of torment thrown in. Yeah. Just for you know, good measure. You gotta make us. You gotta make us suffer sometimes. We can't have it good all the time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then I guess just to kind of wrap it up, this one's for Ryan. Will Pogs ever make it into your presentation? You have trading cards, <laughs> but now we would like to see Pogs. <laughs> wow. I wasn't I wasn't a big Pogs uh, collector, believe it or not. You'd think I would be. There were some neighborhood kids, you know, or kids who I babysat who had some Pogs. So, you know, maybe that's the next frontier after we get after we exhaust all the figural expressions from retro to six inch. Who knows? You should, you should just include a pog with new figures and then make them hard to get. That way everyone starts clamoring for pogs again. And slammers. Slam, we gotta have slammers. Slam. Yeah, like the fat <laughs> slam. Yeah, see, so I know about them. Yeah, clearly. But. Well, how, how are we looking on time? Is it, we got time for one more or are we... Uh, Why don't we just do one, one quick one? Okay, basically it was just, what do you think is the strongest aspect right now for Marvel Legends? And then what would you think needs work or you know you've addressed you know stores not having you know enough stock once in a while but like what do you think needs to work on and what do you think are the strongest aspects right now for legends i think for me the strongest aspects are the the the, the team effort of um everyone coming together to add input to make this line what it is and that's not just the marvel legends team there's amazingly passionate uh, designers, engineers, uh, marketers, uh, model makers in Hasbro that love this line. And every one of them likes to um, stop by my office or any of the guys and we talk about different things. And it's all of them bring insights from their brands that we can, you know, borrow, beg, steal to infuse some of that thinking into our line and share our knowledge with them as well as we get some of the younger teams coming up, working on lines. I think that's one of the biggest strengths to the Marvel Legends slash Hasbro teams, uh, being able to, to share all that kind of knowledge and passion amongst ourselves. Yeah, so for me, I think the strength is, I think we don't really have, especially in Marvel Legends, we don't have this mentality of like being in a ivory tower where we're like, you know, secluded away from the fans. I think our strength is that we work really well together and we try to listen to the fans as much as possible. So we try to be a brand for the people and try to give them what they want a lot. And uh, I think our strength really comes from the diversity that Dwight mentioned before. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, there's always room for improvement, but uh, yeah, I think that's our strength. So go yeah, yeah. I'll just close it out by saying what's great about legends is the fan community and just the support and everyone's appetite. At, at, you know, for these past couple of years and how we have, you know, thousands, almost like a never ending roster of comic characters. And then of course you got all the live entertainment, movies, television shows. So endless source material. Um, so that those are all great things. And then the challenge is just focusing because we have a certain amount of things we can do each year. So we just need to pick and choose, 
you know, not enough X-Men, too many X-Men, not enough Avengers, too many Avengers. So we, we try to make everyone kind of happy a little bit and kind of feel it out that way. Um, and just so just kind of balancing and focusing in, in, in the best kind of way we can. Excellent. Yeah, I will say this. When the three of you guys are together, and of course, Jesse Falcon and everybody else, it's just a very cohesive team. You guys look like you're having fun. It reflects on what you guys put out. Every time you go, oh, there's going to be a new reveal. I'm like, it's going to be cool. You know, it's going to be something I want. You guys are killing it. Way to go. <laughs> Stay tuned, man. This year ain't done, so we got some more. No, you got to stop saying that. My bank account, man. It's... <laughs> Every time you go on Twitter, I'm like, oh, here we go. There's another 200 bucks. <laughs> And I think it's safe to say that 2020 needs to be done. Can we just move on? Yeah, right? What a great week so far, right? <laughs> exactly. There, I mean, there's highlights. You know, there's the moments to sit down and talk with, uh, with you guys and, and have some fun just kind of geeking out and, and, and enjoying the craft of what we do. You know, it's like yeah. this job is awesome, but it's super freaking stressful and, and, and everything else that goes along with, you know, life and, and world in general. So you know, it's awesome. I love my job. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's more than a job. It's a career, you know, but we don't often get enough time just to step back and breathe and say, you know, let's have some fun and let's just talk about this stuff. So. Yeah. That's why we, yeah. That's why I thought maximum carnage. Let's talk about the weirdest storylines, <laughs> the nineties and everything else. Right. Exactly. So, next, well, okay, so the next time we talk, let's go over extinction agenda. Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay. See, that's where I'm going to have to do some research. So I will I'll meet you on that. that. <laughs> homework also dan i'm still waiting on my biggie smalls build a figure just fyi so no it was a suge knight figure build a figure what are you talking about oh so you do remember okay that's what so it's a suge knight <laughs> build a figure don't worry man well thank you guys i know you guys are busy but hopefully we had some fun today and uh, i do appreciate your time so thank you as always always thanks, thanks man thanks all right have a good one you guys talk to you soon See you next time have a good one. peace